Now, at the most extreme end, we have a condition called Cushing's disease or Cushing's syndrome. Cushing's syndrome is a vivid illustration of cortisol excess. It's typically caused by a pituitary tumor or what's called an adenoma, where the pituitary gland has this growth, a tumor, and it is actively dumping out ACTH. So this overproduction of ACTH will go down to the adrenal cortex and result in the overproduction of cortisol. In this situation, the most dramatic effect are the physical changes, and they are striking. The patients will, within, within just weeks, start to develop a very round, puffy face or what's called a moon face. They will also have a fatty deposit on the upper back, um, what's sometimes referred to as a buffalo hump. But in addition to this central, the centralization of fat, it, it, where the person's getting a lot fatter from essentially from the pubis or right at the center of you know, the groin area, all the way up to the top, they start to become very, very round right on the body. At the same time, they start to have very thin and fragile skin where the skin is easily bruised and they start to get these big purple stretch marks. This can happen anywhere, but especially it's happening on the abdomen where the person is gaining so much weight. And indeed, weight gain is rapid. It is predominantly central, like I said, with the fat accumulation really occurring on the trunk of the body. While the, the limbs, like the legs and arms, start to get quite thin, this is a very stark central adiposity. In these very visible changes reflect the profound metabolic shifts, the rapid weight gain and the visceral fat accumulation and the central fat accumulation stem from cortisol's effect on adipose tissue, while the high incidence of type 2 diabetes in these people with Cushing's syndrome points to some disruptions in glucose metabolism and insulin signaling. The metabolic effects are not merely cosmetic they really do signal a cascade of biochemical changes that we're going to get into now. So let's start by diving into the, the type 2 diabetes aspect. What is it that cortisol is doing to glucose and insulin in order to put them into such a in metabolic harm? And there, it is extensive, but let's, I, I want to touch on the biochemistry as I go through these descriptions. Cortisol is, as I've said, a potent driver. Indeed, there's almost nothing equivalent of gluconeogenesis, the liver's production of glucose from non-glucose precursors. This includes things like lactate, amino acids, and glycerol. Those are the that's the trifecta, the holy trinity of glucogenic substrate. In liver cells in hepatocytes, cortisol binds the glucocorticoid receptor, which, as I noted earlier, upregulates Pepsi K expression and another important enzyme called glucose six phosphatase. Now, Pepsi K is busily converting oxaloacetate. It's if anyone, if you think of glycolysis, the breakdown of glucose, always in biochemistry, we t we look at it as a kind of downward process. So, you know, pardon, you'll it'll make sense why I'm sort of pointing in various directions if you keep that paradigm in mind. So, glycolysis is when you have the glucose come into a cell, and then you're steadily breaking it down through this catabolic process in order to get ATP. Gluconeogenesis is the inverse. Now we are taking simpler molecules and building them up into glucose, so it's anabolic. Now, at the bottom of this, or at the front end, if you will, at the beginning of gluconeogenesis, Pepsi-K is helping to convert a molecule called oxaloacetate into a molecule called phosphoenolpyruvate. And that is the one of the, some of the first step. But then at the end of it all, right before the liver cell is ready to actually kick the glucose out, that's where you have the glucose 6-phosphatase because it will take the glucose 6-phosphate and kick off the phosphate, which now allows the liver cell to release a free glucose. That is an enzyme that you don't see elsewhere. Why does the muscle not share its glucose? Well, one reason is it doesn't have that glucose 6-phosphatase. It can't liberate the glucose back into its native form. 